Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kirby Gatto. Welcome to today. It is Monday morning. Oh my goodness. I am super excited to encourage and strengthen you in the word of truth. Amen. If you are needing direction by the Holy Spirit, God's going to bring you scriptures today that are just going to bless you as you learn to take your thoughts captive in greater measure and the power of Holy Spirit leading and directing you as you are a son and daughter of God. Amen. And so I'm going to look at a couple of things. I'm going to be bringing you information just a little bit, and I'll have more of it in my book, The Forbidden Fruit, The Spiritual Dis-Ease in Relation to Sourdough Bread, and an analogy that God has really given me that's blessed me that will bless all of you about the relation of things happening in our members. Amen. It is going to just super bless you. I cannot wait to bring this to you. Let me get one more scripture. God is telling me to get one more scripture. <clears throat> Hold on one second. Getting you one more scripture. Hey, Ashley, God bless you. Thank you for joining in. Hey, Sue Gailey, God bless you. Y'all are going to love this. Oh, my goodness. God is so awesome. And again, I'm just giving you a snippet from the Forbidden Fruit, the Spiritual Disease, which will be out next year. And I'm feverishly getting, I hear the Father saying, out in November. And so I'll be working a lot. Hey, Deborah Faulkner, God bless you. Thank you for joining in. Oh, my goodness. A couple of things. I'm going to bring information to you a day is about sourdough bread. And I put a picture of this, the sourdough whisperer, and it is by Elaine Booty. And it she's from England. And this is an amazing book. But for the last few weeks, I've been doing sourdough bread starter. Now, if you've never made sourdough bread, it is a totally different bread in preparation and also making. And it is absolutely amazing how healthy it is for you. What is even better is last night when I made my first sourdough bread as far as baking it, finishing it, and eating it last night, the whole left side of my brain a switch was on, and it was super alert and awake. And so I looked at what the left side of your brain does, and it's in relation to memory, to cognition, to arithmetic, to being able to communicate. And it was absolutely phenomenal. It was like a switch flipped. And then I did research and saw that the sourdough wild yeast that is in sourdough bread is so healthy for your microbiome, for your gut, and how that gut and brain axis, how there is that connection where that good microbiome in your gut affects your mood, your perceptibility, and your brain function. Is that not amazing? And so, of course, Romans 12, 1, verses 1 and 2 came to me as in mindfulness of Christ, that we are to consecrate our body first. And when we consecrate our body, then the mind is transformed. That whole book gets to the receptor level of what deliverance looks like, not only in scripture, but in physiology and what is going on inside of the body at the receptor level. And so I'm going to bring you just a snippet of chapter four in the Forbidden Fruit, the Spiritual Disease, the sequel to mindfulness amount of Christ. And I'm going to do it through the analogy of sourdough bread and the gut brain axis. And I'm going to do it also with Romans 12, 1 and Romans 12, 2. And we're going to look at the consecrated body, holy and dedication to God, which is our reasonable worship and then the transformed mind. So many times when you go in your destiny, you're trying to go head first. When you're trying to deal with problems, many times if you're not guarding your heart and your mind, you're going to go head first. And we don't want to do that. We want to be led by the Spirit of God. Amen. In relation to Romans 8, 10 through 14, those that are the sons and daughters of God are led by the Spirit. Amen. And so I'm going to read Romans 12, 1 and 2, 
And then I'm also gonna go into the gut brain axis and then we're gonna unfold it and unpack it as I also bring to you Matthew 13. Let me make sure. Matthew 13, 33. God gave me this probably about a month and a half ago or two months ago. And I just wanna bring just a tidbit of revelation he gave me for chapter four of the forbidden fruit, the spiritual dis-ease in chapter four is the fourth dimension, the kingdom of heaven. Good morning, Kim. God bless you. I'm so glad you're feeling invigorated on those patches. And Kim is saying she feels invigorated on the phototherapy patches I distribute. And if you have not, check those out. And I still have testimony after testimonies of just phenomenal things that those phototherapy patches are doing. And I'm so excited. And so let's look at the gut-brain axis, and then I'm going to get into Romans 12, 1 and 2. And so, the gut-brain axis is a two-way biochemical signaling that takes place between the gastrointestinal tract tract, and the central nervous system. And in that microbiota gut-brain axis, the good microbiome that's in your belly has an effect on your brain, just like I mentioned after I did the sourdough homemade bread, where I fed the starter for over two weeks, making sure the starter was strong, doing video after video after video, doing article after article after article, getting the sourdough whisper by Elaine Bodie, and just pouring myself into all of this research, I figured out that sourdough bread is unlike any other bread. It is a science and an art, a science and an art. And Holy Spirit, many weeks before the Lord led me to do sourdough bread, Holy Spirit just kept speaking to me about the parable where Jesus said that the kingdom of heaven is like leaven. Now, I don't know if y'all are familiar with this parable, but we're going to get into this parable today. And I'm going to kind of pull from mindfulness, mind of Christ, as we look at Romans 12, 1 and 2, the mind and body connection, which is what mindfulness, mind of Christ book is all about. And we're going to push in just a little bit more. And we're going to look at destiny. And I'm going to bring in the analogy of sourdough bread and Matthew 13, 33, in relation to the kingdom of heaven being like leaven and comparing it to that sourdough starter. And so the gut-brain axis releases, it's about chemical signaling, hormonal signaling with the immune system, the endocrine system, hormone system, and with the central nervous system. So whatever is going on in here affects this. And you know, we always try to think of our brain and how we think affecting our body, but we never realize that our body is a garden, especially that microbiome, that we have more foreign microbiome inside of our belly than our own cells in our body. Is that not amazing? And in chapter five of the forbidden fruit, the spiritual disease, and I introduce it in chapter one and chapter two, there's a symbiotic relationship that God created with mankind and the earth and how we came out of the dirt. And so many things that are in the earth are also in our body. And that is for a purpose. So let's look at Romans 12, 1 and 2. And then I'm going to get into Matthew 13, 33. Verse 1 out of the Amplified Classic, Romans 12. I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, and beg of you in view of all the mercies of God to make a decisive dedication of your bodies, presenting all your members and faculties as a living sacrifice, holy, devoted, consecrated, and well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable, rational, intelligent service and spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, verse 2 now, this age, fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs, but be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideals, ideals, its new attitude, so that you may prove, and I'm going to talk about proving, proofing bread, leaven, starter for your sourdough, 
so that you can prove for yourselves what is good, acceptable, and perfect, the will of God, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. And so as it is in here, it is up here. Areas where our soul is working up its salvation and fear and trembling, Philippians 2.12, that we have wounds, uncertainty, the carnal nature operative in our members. The Holy Spirit is bringing truth, unfolding the Word of God, so that your faith can be tested, proven. Amen. And so I want to get into a little bit in relation to sourdough bread, because as I looked up sourdough bread and the benefits of the brain, I also found an article that said that it helps with cancer prevention, it helps with Alzheimer's, it helps with relation to areas of neuropathic uh, syn syn uh, synaptic occurrences in your brain. And so whatever's going on in here is going to affect the brain. But now let's look at this also in relation to your emotions. As I explain in Mindfulness and Mind of Christ, that book, this book about the G protein coupled receptor, your emotions are actually memories unpacking at the receptor level, the G protein coupled receptor inside of your body. And it's causing you to have all these feelings. And so whatever you're full of in relation to memories, not in your neurons, but in your body at this receptor level, when it hits with a neuropeptide or a frequency, it's going to unpack that receptor and it's going to start bringing out all of these memories. And with all of these memories are going to come emotions. So you think that you're feeling some type of negative emotion, maybe at times, maybe insecurity, maybe uncertainty, maybe weird, but all of those emotions are literally memories unpacking. And so as I explain in Mindfulness Amount of Christ, the body and mind are trying to reconcile 24-7, get on the same page. And so the body's language, as I explain in that book, is what is your condition and the the, the mind's language is, what is your condition? And the body's language is emotion. And so constantly, the brain is asking the body, what's going on? How are we? What is our state, our condition? And they're always trying to land on the same page 24-7. And so those times that you're feeling weird, you don't have the files necessary in the new season and like holy spirit showed me anytime i felt weird and i would always say this was probably back in about 2003 i would constantly tell rich man i just feel weird i just feel so weird and it wasn't a bad weird it was just weird and the only way that i can liken it as god showed me like a one-year-old trying to walk and so what's going on is the one-year-old's body is trying to do things walk legs arms, hips, shoulders, and new neural pathways are being formed and neural groupings for that walking in that young child. And that is how it's like when we go from glory to glory, 2 Corinthians 3.18, and we go higher in the word of truth. We go deeper, as I did Ephesians 3.20 just a couple of days ago, as we see that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can think or imagine, God is taking us above what we can think, above what we can imagine, and that's where you feel weird. And so you don't have the neural, neural memories in your neurons that your body at the G-protein coupled receptor has from the past when you've gone higher with God, you're in that consecrated state, and so your mind is more transformed, and so your body is creating new memories at the G-protein coupled receptor, which the G-protein coupled receptor is all your senses, and that's why that receptor neck down regulates your organs, hundreds are on cells, and half of the flavors of that receptor, which a thousand different ones have been discovered up to date, 
and about almost half of those receptors, those flavors, half of the flavors of that G-protein coupled receptor are eyes, ears, smell, and taste in your body. And so, the only way I can describe it is awaken. And I think about in Ephesians, as scripture says, awake, awake, O sleeper. When we look at awake, awake, O sleeper, and that scripture, is t Ephesians 5.14, is talking about going up to a new level, waking up from slumber, waking up from the things of this world. And you don't realize, and oh my goodness, I cannot wait to get the forbidden fruit, the spiritual disease out. Oh my goodness, it's beyond phenomenal. You don't realize how many times you're not walking in the spirit of adoption. As in Romans 8, where we who are in Christ and we have a new spirit that our spirit cries out, Abba, that so many times your mind will interfere with your spirit man and you're not leaning fully into the word of truth and you haven't allowed that full deliverance to come in and upon you and healing and wholeness. And so that area of your soul wars against the word of truth. That is why you have trials and tribulations to prove, to test the quality of the word that is in you that's taken root. And the love of that word, that Holy Scripture, is going to bring such a Holy Spirit and fire baptism. Matthew 3, 11 and 12, that Jesus Christ came to bring, where it purifies your soul and it gets the unhealthy things out. And so, let's look at a couple of things. We're going to look at now Matthew 12, 33. And I'm going to get into that, I mean, Matthew 13, 33. And I'm going to get into the parable where Jesus talks about the kingdom of heaven is like leaven that a woman took and covered for three measures in flour till it was leavened. Because this reminds me, after doing a sourdough starter, which, oh my goodness, initially I was so intimidated. Again, it looked like a science. It looked like an art a skill that had to be acquired. And you know, God just reminded me, Edison had to start somewhere. And I just needed to jump in there, even though I had my sourdough starter. And I'll put that in the comments. I've already posted it two weeks ago, but I'll put it up again as well, just so you can have that information. And so I was nervous. I was like, oh my goodness, am I going to get this right? I've never done this, but thank goodness. There were plenty of instruction videos, both in the sourdough starter itself, as well as videos. And also in relation to the book that I got, The Sourdough Whisperer. And I just didn't want to jump in because I was afraid I was going to mess it up. But you know what? I had to start somewhere. And that is God's call for us in walking in the power of the kingdom of heaven. You feel weird. You haven't gone this way before. You're getting acclimated. You're going to a higher level of the call that God has for you. And so God is acclimating your senses. As I talked about, half of those flavors of the G protein coupled receptor and mindfulness of Christ are your senses in your body, but also your senses on your face. They are what actually record in your neurons. So the G protein coupled receptor is working cohesively with your neurons and it's encoding memories in your neurons. And so we're going to look at this and I'm going to look at Matthew 13, 33. That is why you have to understand that your senses are your diet. As I talked about in Mindfulness, Mind of Christ, and I'm going to liken it to sourdough bread and the sourdough starter and looking at the kingdom of heaven. And so when you first start a sourdough starter, it's not strong enough for sourdough bread. So you have to feed it every single day. I kept it out, fed it every single day. It's a wild bacteria that is working things out. It's got all these bacteria in it. And some of it is working out. Some of it's it's creating and it gets stronger and stronger and stronger until about 10 days, you're able to use that healthy bacteria, wild yeast, to make a sourdough bread. And even that is a process, and it's not quick. And I think about the yeast today, those packet yeasts, you know, you just pour it in real fast, 
and you end up getting in about 30 minutes a rise. That is not how it is with a sourdough starter. It takes nourishing, it takes feeding, and it's working out all these good bacteria that when you eat it, these bacteria are good for your microbiome. And it ends up with the gut-brain axis, it ends up making your cognition more sharp, alert, awake, and it causes your perception to be on a higher intensity than before. That is a good analogy about how it is when we go into a new season, when God leads us into a new direction. We've not been this way before. It's intimidating, just like me trying to do the starter for the sourdough bread. It's intimidating, but eventually we just jump in and just do it. And God is with us and he loves our faith. And according to that need, as we step out and are faithful, the Holy Spirit comes and guides us. And we see that in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, that we lean not on our own understanding, but in all of our ways, we acknowledge God and he directs our paths. Now let's look at Matthew 13, 33. And 13 means love. 1 Corinthians 13 has 13 verses, the chapter of love. And 33 means anointing. The power behind the anointing of God in our lives is always love. And so the attack of the enemy is always going to come against the love of Christ in us. It's going to disturb your peace. It's going to get you angry. It's going to get you irritated. It's going to get you sad. It's going to get you depressed. It's interesting because studies show with this sourdough wild yeast, and how it feeds the microbiome, and it's a particularly good yeast for your microbiome, that it is so healthy in relation to your brain that it ends up lifting your mood. Is that not beyond phenomenal? So let's look at verse 33, Matthew 13. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven, sour dough. What? Oh my goodness. And the Amplified Classic, because I told Rich today, I said, Rich, I am totally convinced that the bread that they had at the time of Christ was sourdough bread. Y'all, that is what it says right here. I'm just now seeing it. What? It says sourdough. Oh, my goodness. Which a woman took and covered over in three measures of meal of flour till it had all leaven. So this is such a good explanation of kind of feeding your starter because many times they say three parts flour, three part and and then water equal 50-50 ratio when feeding your starter, not when making your bread. That is a whole different thing. This is just about feeding your starter. And let me go get a couple of starters just so you can see. <clears throat> Okay, I actually have three jars of starter. I just took these out of the refrigerator. Here's one, and I put my, one of my phototherapy patches on it, just FYI. Here's one, and this is in the refrigerator. And here is my discard starter, which means every time that I get ready to feed this starter, I get some out, and I put the discard in here. It's hard for me to throw it away because it's alive. <laughs> And I got a patch on it too, a phototherapy patch. And so I feed the starter three parts flour and then equal water. Now this is just the yeast, okay? This, <laughs> this is just the yeast. This is not the actual bread making. And so this ends up doubling in size once you feed it every single day, keeping it out of the refrigerator once you feed it every single day, I did it for 10 weeks for it to have a strength in order to rise. The thing I love about sourdough bread is it has less gluten. It's not kneading. It's pulling and folding and very little, by the way. And that pull and fold ends up creating a structure that is perfect for that sourdough bread to have the perfect height, the perfect rise, 
and for the microbiome to be fed as you eat it. And so this is what I think is absolutely amazing is that the sourdough is not needed is that every 30 minutes, hour, whatever, you stretch, you pull, and you fold. And all I can think about is how God stretches us. The kingdom of heaven stretches our faith. And the word of God is unfolded and it folds within our members. Is that not amazing? I just think it is absolutely amazing that Jesus uses this parable and the Amplified Classic has it as sour dough. Oh my goodness, my favorite bread. <clears throat> and so let's look at this particular Greek word in Matthew 13, 33, because the people only look at leaven in the parable that Jesus gave about the leaven of the Pharisees. And I think about their leaven and their leaven to me would be analogous to those little packets that you open up, pour out, and it's ready in 30 minutes. And it looks like God, but it's not God. It's not the real thing. It's not good for your microbiome. The interesting thing is this is great in many articles that said for diabetics because it's the spikes in your blood sugar is really low. Why? Because this has a lower glycemic index in relation to your sugar spiking, that your sugar is not going to spike because it is has a lower sugar response, blood glucose, in relation to your sugar levels. So let's look at this particular word, leaven, in Matthew 13, 33. And let's look at this Greek word and see what it says. <clears throat> Where a woman, King James Version, another parable spake he unto them, the kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole thing was leavened. And so that word leaven in the Greek is zume, zume, and it means leaven, it means to ferment. And so what is cool about sourdough is it is really this fermentation that as you feed it, as you content, continually take care of it, which, you know, sourdough bread making is, if you're not used to it, it's intimidating, overwhelming at times. It's stretching you. It's a science. It's a skill, an art. But this is what's really cool is that once you jump in and you start doing it, it's not as bad as you think. It's just something new you've not done before. And as I mentioned last night, oh my goodness, we ate my sourdough bread Although we'd been buying it at Continental Bakery in Mountain Brook, Mountain Brook, because we're only just not even a mile. We're probably half a mile around away from the bakery. And we've been eating that sourdough bread, but it did not have the effect that my sourdough bread had. The yeast that I had been fermenting and feeding the starter and I think about starting a new job, starting a new level, starting in the call. And that's what this is called, the yeast starter. And you know, I think about God starting a new thing in us. And how at first, we don't realize that we're going to a new level. But as you feed this starter, how it ends up doubling in size when you leave it out and you sit it out. And it starts to rise. You might not see it at first. But when you jump in and you allow God to stretch the word in you and stretch your faith, you're able to see the kingdom of heaven rise. So let's go to the Greek word from which zume comes, and it comes from zeo. It's funny because it reminds me of Zoe. And so zeo means to be fervent, to be earnest. Is that not amazing? It also means of liquid or glow. Is that not amazing? And when we see that word, it is used in Romans 12, 11, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. And Acts 18, 25 is the second place this Greek word is used. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord and being fervent in spirit. 
he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. And then, of course, he gets the baptism of Holy Spirit later. So, saints, oh my goodness, think about this. That leaven in our members of the kingdom of heaven is about the fervency of God. Have you felt dry? Have you felt forsaken? Have you felt inadequate, insecure? You know what? God's fervency of the kingdom of heaven in you rises up so you can run your race and what he's called you to. So now I'm going to end here with the definition of fervent. And let's look at this. It means having a display of passionate intensity. Oh my goodness, I'm so glad that God brought us to this. Because one of the things the enemy attacks me on a lot is being fully and fervently myself, my personality in Christ. And you know what? As you're in Christ, the longer you're in Christ, you get to really know your personality and you walk in your personality and you just press into God and you're fully yourself and you're not insecure and you're not worried about how you might come across to others or what other people think about you. You are passionately and fervently yourself. The enemy hates this. And as you know who you are in Christ, you know your call, you know your name and who God's called you to be, you wear it. You walk in it. And fervent also means to be hot, burning, and glowing. So let's look at what this word comes from. The old French word fervent from comes from ferver, and it means to be boiling. And we see this with a Shulamite when her love, as is in Romans 8, 6, and 7, after she's come out of the wilderness, she is boiling over with God's name, jealous, where je love has evolved. As I explain in Mindfulness, the Mind of Christ, that love has to evolve. And it evolves into jealousy, where you have God's name, jealous. You have his jealous nature. And that is what compels you to go into the call fully in what God has called you to. And so the Shulamite represents that in Song of Solomon 8, 6, and 7. Put a seal on my arm, the works of God. Put a fiery seal upon my heart that many waters cannot quench love. It is crueler than the grave. It is stronger than death. It is jealous. It is going to be, do the very things of God. So saints, if you're feeling weird, if you're feeling like you're at a new level, like you don't know what you're going through, and your, your, your mind cannot figure out what's going on with your body, press in and know that the kingdom of heaven in the consecrated body is being revealed. And it's going to bring that information, that transformation to the mind as it wakes up to what God's called you to in this life. Amen. You are an invention of God's intention. God bless you. I love you. Have an amazing day.